Hello everybody, I'm going to tell you and Zoe what I'm going to do right now, because Zoe doesn't know. Um, I just wanted to sit here and have a cup of joe with my good friend Vonnie and talk about what's been going on. Um, some of my favorite videos to watch are these lovely Sunday chats that so many people do. So like any good YouTuber, I'm going to steal that idea and do it as well because it it's pleasant. What the hell was that? Shay, you okay? Oh, whew. Honestly, I've been reading a magazine about animals attacking people. And that sounded like a herd of rats crawling up the wall. And I... The ground yeah, attack of the ground squirrels. Ground squirrels ripped my flesh. Anyway. Chipotle attack. Chipotle attack. <laughs> One of the stories in that thing is about sugar gliders killing people. And, um... I think Zoe was all about it and then saw that and was like, oh. Um, I'm going to have to write a story about um, water bears attacking people. What are they called? Tardigrade. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Don't take that idea, jerks. That's mine. You don't think that's a good idea? Yeah, I just don't think anybody else is going to take it on. Oh. Zoe thinks so little of all of you. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Um, I even took notes, guys. This, this is how serious I'm taking a, a casual Sunday chat. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that the amazing novella, The Brain Hunter, written by yours truly, which is the first book in the uh, Zombie Zero series, is out right now. And there's a link down below. And it's probably the best dollar you can have ever spent in your life. So, get on that, okay? Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about some of the things that have happened this week. The fallout of a certain discussion video. Um, little things like that. So, uh, you may or may not know that there was a video um, that said some stuff that I disagreed with. And I didn't disagree with the principle behind the video. I disagreed with some of the things that were said in the video. And um, I wanted to make a response video because there were so many thoughts running through my head. And then as a human, I felt, you know what, I probably should leave a comment on their video and just kind of open some sort of dialogue before I post this, because that's kind of, I, I didn't want to come off as attacking. So I left a comment um, that I felt was very vague and just kind of chill, or whatever. Um, and then I made my video. And then while the video was uploading, which took forever, um, there was all sorts of um, comments going back and forth between the author of said video and me and some other people. 
Um, now, I am going to do something shocking. I'm going to share with you some of my flaws. I know. I know. I didn't think I had any either. Um, but between Zoe, my therapist, every person and authority who had ever been above me in the pecking order, they all seem to think that I have a couple flaws. And so, um, what those are is when someone is talking to me and there is discussion and then condescension. And when that happens, like, I kick into complete bitch mode. And there ain't no coming off of it. And that is a problem I have. And I feel like that's kind of why I isolate myself from people because all of these years of living I know that I do this thing where um, even if the things I'm saying are 100% factual and provable the way I deliver statements sometimes come off as um, just fucked, like, come off like I'm a dick, and, um, and I'm probably being a dick, but they come off aggressive, that's the right word, right, babe? Yeah, aggressive. And a wise man said to me, why do you even want to get involved? And I was like, huh, you raise a very intelligent question. And I think what it is, is that um, the things that were, that I said in my response video, I think are 100% valid. Like, I don't think I said anything in the video that was inaccurate by any means. Um, but I think what I'm going to do for now on, a way to better myself, um, because I don't want, like, the people who uploaded the, vi the original video, I don't want to, like, be at war with them. I don't want to, like, you know, like, like I said in my video, like, people who came to booktube came to booktube just so they could talk about books you know um so i think the best thing for me to do is probably to not yes. the dogs do not like this idea what oh um i think i should just kind of stay away from discussions and comments and I'm going to leave my discussions on the video um, because I feel like there are people who when even in a public forum I almost feel like there's a need to overextend yourself because there's an audience and so I think what I'm going to do for now on, if I ever want to do a response video to anybody, I will contact them privately and talk to them a little bit, let them know that I'm going to be doing a response video, um, or talk about our ideas beforehand. And then if it doesn't, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't want to 
get involved in anything publicly like that anymore. Um, because, like I even said in the video, I feel like a lot of the stuff that they said was probably not taken out of context, but like you couldn't really tell the context because of how the video format was structured. And I feel like, um, I just feel like I need to take a step back, but I do like the video I did. So, um, all in all, I think that's okay. Um, I just don't want to get into shouting matches with anybody. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, next thing. <clears throat> there have been some people who don't like my high contrast black and white videos. And, um, The reason why I started doing that is because we don't have all of our books here. And I guess I was feeling um, booktube self-conscious doing videos about books that I only have on, on ebook or audio books of and um, putting the picture of the books up and I'm like oh you know what if I do that high contrast thing that I really like that's just like a me preference maybe that those books will just like pop off the screen when I put a picture of them up and um, some people have found it distracting and the other thing about it is I, like I just said, like I really dig high contrast black and white. Um, I like it because it reminds me, it's, I have like a nostalgia with like old zine um, and flyers like Xerox copy, like old, like just old print. I love it. So I think maybe, because I really do like that, and I don't want to, like, just start, like, bowing out of doing something that I like. So I think what I'm going to do is when I do videos that are either inspired by Weird Mask or have something to do with Weird Mask, I'll keep doing the videos like that. And in other videos, I'll just um, give you beauty that is my face in normal, non-filtered technicolor. That's a contradiction there, but that's okay. So let me know down below um, what your thoughts on that are. Um, as far as um, other totally amazing stuff, um, earlier today... Um, I watched um, Mark Richardson's video of him just chilling and chatting, um, which in no way did I steal the format of his video from today to do my video for today. But um, he kept talking about so many cool things, and I was getting all these like ideas and questions. And I was just like, dude, I want to just completely spam your comments and ask you 30 million questions. So um, I finally just said, I'm like, look, I'm going to hit you up on Voxer. Like, I don't want to, like, take over your comments or whatever. So um, one of the things was... I love, and if you saw my book haul, you would know this too, I love, like, old fiction magazines. Like, from the pulps to um, later slicks to um, 
the men's adventure and like i'm just now getting into the men's adventure stuff um just because it's so outlandish and ridiculous it's just so much fun but um dell the dell publishing group or uh what is the like the i think it's a i think it's the parent company of that arm of dell which i might be wrong i think it's like penny something penny penny something and whatever um dell is i haven't been to a big enough bookstore lately to see what magazines are actually being um, produced right now. But as far as like fiction magazines, the only ones I could think of that are in like wide circulation are the four that Dell puts out, which is um, Asimov's Analog, um, Alfred Hitchcock, and Ellery, Ellery Queen. I don't know why. I trip on that dude. Um, anyway. And I know the difference between Asimov and Analog. But I've never understood what the difference between Hitchcock and Queen is. So if anyone out there knows the answer to this question, I would love to hear it. Um, I know the difference between the two of, like, the pseudonym and then Hitchcock. They have nothing to do with one another. But the magazines themselves, like, is there... And, like, I went on the website, and I was, like, looking, trying to see if I could um, see a difference. And then I went into their submissions to see if I could see a difference. And it's funny, because, like, they're like, if you're unsure of what we do on this magazine, we suggest you pick up an issue and read it. And I'm like, that still doesn't help me. So I guess I have to go pick up an issue and read it. Um, but I would just love to know. Um, and if there's any other cool, um, like widely circulated, um, magazines of any kind, let me know down below, like, what are your favorites and which, what should I go look for? Um, I'm really digging the ones I'm finding on Amazon right now that are like, um, print on demand. They're really cool there's a bunch in my uh, book haul video um so there's that um, another thing that was on mark's channel or on that video mark did was he got the new john stone books and i was at walmart i think last week and saw him they're kind of a ridiculous shape. They're almost square. And I was looking at them and I'm like, this won't fit in my back pocket. Like, this is ridiculous. Why is this book this size? But it did jump out of the shelf at me. So I'm wondering if the only reason why they did it was to just kind of shake things up and see if they get more eyes on the books. Um, and honestly, if their sales go up at all, um, they'll be able to look at that and go, oh, we've sold more books now that we have our books that are at this size. Um, so, you know, whatever. Like, let's keep doing that. Um, I also completely lost my freaking mind a couple years back when I started seeing uh, mass market paperbacks get really tall. Like they were still like four and a half inches wide, but they just got taller for some reason. And I thought that was really weird. But I was like, ah, I can still put that in my back pocket, I guess. But um, it's very tall. And if I were to sit down on it, it would probably bend the book in half or like break my hip or like, mess of vertebrae up but um do book sizes matter to you that much anymore <clears throat> um i've always preferred like a book i could hold in my hand like this I, it's i i just prefer it 
when I read it, I almost get mad because the, the print's so small and I'm getting older and my eyes don't work as much. And the other day, I don't remember what book it was, but I picked up a book and looked at the print and the print was so damn small. With my glasses on, I'm going to have to get a whole magnifying glass to read and I'll probably do it by candlelight in a powdered wig so I feel really cool. But um, Zoe was cracking up at me. Like, we have a magnifying glass if you need a magnifying glass. And, but, <laughs> crack it up back there. I remember before I got glasses, at my desk I had a magnifying glass. And I would use it to read um, if no one was looking or around. Um, so, the problem with little books is that the print's really small. The problem with bigger books is that I can't put them in my pocket, and when I hold them, I feel like I'm, like, it. it's a job. Like, if you're opening, like, you you, saw, you guys saw me. Like, when I was um, showing you that Frazetta book, I was like, I mean, that's kind of a bad example because it's so big, but let's look at this book. This is, like, trade paperback size, I guess. And, um... Mm. It's kind of, the print's kind of, it's not small, but I would have spaced those lines out a little bit more. It just looks kind of, I don't know, like, Zoe gets books. I got Zoe this. Can I show them the book I got you the other day? Okay. So, um, I got Zoe, she's been wanting this for a while, so I got this for her. And this is almost too much. Like, I don't know if you could see it. But, like, the font is kind of big. That's probably 14. The type, like, the, the font type setting is probably, like, 14. And the line spacing on that is really wide. Like, that's, like, almost ridiculous. But when you read this, it won't put a lot of strain on your eyes. So that's cool. I get that. Um, and, in fact, let me see if I could hold two trade paperbacks at once. Um, ooh, that might be tricky. But if you look at this, like these two pages next to each other, I can't get in here to see what it looks like, guys. Um, this book, the Wintington, Zoe's laughing at me again, deep down inside. The line spacing is obviously not as wide, but the font is, the font on here is probably, that's probably like 11. I don't even think that's 12. But this book is three novels and one normal size trade paperback. And I almost, like, I tend to stray away from paperbacks that have a lot of different stories in them, um, with the exception of something as cool as this. Because the. Oh, man. This is some um, tiny print. And for those of you, look at that. Like, oh, are you reading a Bible from the turn of the century? Um, some of you are like, if you've ever read Weird Mask, like the print version of that, they're like, what are you talking about, dude? You do like nine point font with no line spacing and no margins. And I say, yeah, because as a publisher, I'm trying to fit as much on a page as possible. Um, so I, I do understand all of this stuff. Um, but, um, this, this whole conversation has gone completely off the rails. Um, I think we were talking about Jon Snow books, um, and their ridiculous size. 
Um, I won't tell you if Mark liked it or didn't like the size of the book. You're going to have to go watch his video and find out. Maybe I'll even link his video down below. That's what people do. All right. So that was a little bit about book sizes and a little bit about typesetting and line spacing. Okay. Um, so last night, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about March Mystery Madness real quick. So last night, um, I, I probably am not the person who invented this drink, but, um, I think I'm going to name it and I'm going to name it Slim Hot Rita. Huh? No? Okay. So I was making Slim Hot Ritas all night last night. And you might be thinking, what the hell is a Slim Hot Rita? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Did you not know? It's so funny. Zoe gives me courtesy laughs all the time just to get me to stop giving her attention at that moment. Uh, 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 Slim Hot Rita. Okay. So what it is, is um, I take my mug like so, I put a bunch of tequila in it, and then put a little bit of crisp light lemonade powder in it, a little squeeze of lemon, a little pinch of salt, and then I boil a kettle, and I fill the rest of it up with hot water. And, <laughs> and the color of it is the stuff of nightmares. Like, if you've ever seen um, Reanimator, or the poster for Reanimator, um, the stuff in the syringe is what my Slim Hot Rita looks like. Theraflu. Theraflu, yeah. It looks like that. Ooh, maybe I should just put it in Theraflu. That's a whole different drink. And there's also another drink I'm concocting right now with tequila and crushed up orange Tic Tacs. So watch out for that one. Patent pending. Um, but anyway, so I was just drinking these last night because it was my freaking birthday, right? And I was listening to oldies on my Spotify playlist that had like a bunch of doo-wop, a bunch of... <laughs> it had like a bunch of old blues a bunch of like first wave ska a bunch of um like there was credence and the beatles and the stones in it as well um i i was just having a blast man so like and um it was awesome too because like it was like almost every other song was howling wolf just on the um, luck of a shuffle and Solomon Burke. I was just jamming my little heart out last night with my Slim Hot Ritas. And um, I checked the March Mystery Madness Discord and it was like probably like 11.30 and everyone's like, okay, you guys ready to do another sprint? We're going to start. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And even though like there was no reason for me to feel like I needed to jump in on a reading sprint that was like 30 seconds away. But like, I don't know what the hell happened. I just had this like impending sense of like, hurry the hell up, dude. Like you need to get in on this. And I'm like, ah, I finished my last book for the prompts. I don't know what to read. Oh, and I was doing the, Ooh. and, um, so the first one I found that's in my prompt list is um, One Deadly Dawn by Harry Winnington. Good old hair by good old hair. And it's about this um, kind of washed up actor that um, was arrested for murdering a tabloid um, publisher. And he's obviously, he's like, I didn't do it. The 
our main character is the head of publicity for a um, big um, film company. Uh, I can't remember what the name I No, I can't remember the name. Um, and they want him to clear him because this has been, even though he was a has been. He, his name was kind of synonymous with the studio, so they want to make sure that he really had nothing to do with that. So basically, this guy, and there's some other underlining things, but that's kind of like cool parts of the story. So I start reading that, and on my phone it was like 600 ebook pages, which isn't that long at all. And I'm like, okay, I'll just read this for a little bit. And... It was so good, and I just kept reading it, and kept reading it, and kept reading it. And then after all the sprints were done, everyone's like, I'm going to bed, I'm going to bed. I'm like, okay, I'm going to read for maybe another half hour, and then call it quits. I just kept reading. I don't know what time the clocks jumped forward, or jumped back. Wait, back? No, they sprung forward. Um, I don't know what time that was, but when I like finally went to sleep, it was after 3.30, before 4.00 obviously um so anyway but i finished the book i just kept going and i'm like totally drunk reading my book listening to music time of my life it would have been nicer if zoe was like dancing on the countertop I didn't say what kind of dance you were doing, and I didn't even talk about clothes. Like, if you were just like, woo! Can you guys stop thinking of Zoe dancing? You don't want to see her dance. She goes like this. It's very... I know Zoe wasn't feeling good last night. And she's still kind of not feeling great. So anyway. Um, it was just, it was a weird night. Um, but it was so much fun. I had a really great birthday. So um, that was just a really epic day. And then, um, yeah. And then I guess that's it. There's some other stuff I want to talk about. But this video is already getting too long um yeah so we'll leave it at that so um let me know down below um if you have any thoughts on any of the stuff that i talked about in here um i would love to hear them and converse with you further so um take care everybody have a happy sunday and a wonderful week and bye-bye